Hey everyone, today I have a fun math video for you and I'm actually gonna share four different ideas for teaching students how to decompose numbers. Usually we start teaching decomposing numbers around the beginning of teaching addition and realistically it is a great skill for students to understand. It helps them see that numbers can be comprised of and you know, separated into different parts and pieces. This is also a number sense type skill where students are really thinking about about any number, let's say seven, and realizing that when they hear this number seven, it could mean a few things. They know what it physically means, you know, with seven individual pieces, but they also might start to recognize that seven could be four and three, six and one, two and five, and so on. So I have four different ideas for you with a bunch of activities and even a couple of freebies. So stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll tell you where you can grab those freebies. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Susan Jones. I'm a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing videos like this for teachers like you. I love to share all things about primary education. So give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. Idea number one for teaching how to decompose numbers is to make sure you keep it hands on. Now, this is almost always a tip in any of my math videos for kindergarten, first and second grade, but when students are actually able to use their hands, feel the number in front of them, break it apart into pieces, it just adds a whole nother layer to their learning. Now, when teaching students how to decompose numbers in a hands-on fashion, there are many different activities you can play and different models to use when teaching students students the different parts of a number. So let me quickly show you what activities I love to use with my kids. First, I shared this one in a kindergarten edition video. The video looks like that. And this is one of the activities, it's called Magic Bag Teaching. And with this, students will pull a number card. This was of course for kindergarten, so the numbers were within 10, but you could definitely up that to 20 if you are a first grade teacher. All you need to do here is put 10 red cubes and 10 blue cubes, or you know, whatever, two different colors and students would pull a number card. So here you can see they pulled six. And for this activity, all students would have to do is put their hands in the bag and pull out six cubes. Then on the little mat there, I had them sort all the blue cubes on one side, the red cubes on the other side, and then they would make a little cube train to show one way that makes 10. So that first one up there is three blue and three red, so three plus three. Then I would have them put their hands in the bag and pull another six cubes to represent a different way to make the number six. Those little work mats and recording sheets are in my addition for kindergarten unit. It's a hands-on unit, but you can definitely do that with just, like I said, a bunch of different colored cubes, throw it in a bag, and students could do the same thing on a scrap piece of paper by writing down two different ways that they pulled to make whatever number you choose. Another great hands-on decomposing activity is to use these double-sided counters here. Sometimes I have a bunch of these, they're yellow and red. I've seen them in a few different colors, but but because they have two sides, it makes it perfect for this type of activity. Um, you can also use beans. I've seen different sided beans with two different sides as well. But basically this game is just called shake and spill. So you could start with the number 10, the number six, the number 20, however you wanted. And you would put that many um, counters or beans into the cup. And then they would just shake and spill them on the table in front of them and they would see how many red and how many yellow they have to make that number. Now when I'm doing an activity like that one, I like to use a few different models for my students to get used to when they are seeing this decomposing type of activity. So some of the models I like to use are a number bond that looks like this. You have the bigger side being the whole and the smaller side being the two parts. I also like to use a part part whole sheet like this one where the two parts are on the bottom and the whole is on the top. This one kind of is set up like a puzzle piece to show that these pieces fit together to create the bigger one. I also like to use 10 frames for this as well as a place for students to put those counters or those beans when playing an activity like this. And just to show you quickly, this is exactly how I would do it in my room. So for shake and spill, you would simply have a cup filled with those double-sided counters. And I have 15 in here. With first grade, I would usually do up to 20. And so here I'll use the example of using 10 frames. So they shake and spill. 
And I like to have them separate it into um, the different colors first. And then they simply fill up this 10 frame. Again, I like that it is tactile for them. So they would put one in each. We can see 11 yellow plus four red equals 15. And I would have them write this down on a sheet that would say 11 plus four equals 15. Similar with the number bond mat, you would have, again, they would shake and spill. And here I would have them separate it very clearly into their two parts. So we have the yellows can go down here. Barely get enough room for these guys. And the reds up here. And on this board in the freebie, I already have a line for equation. So they could write their equation. Looks like we have six plus nine equals 15. And for this, I also like to have students, if they're trying to put it together, I will have them start here and move each one over as they count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Or if you're practicing counting on, you could have them move the six over first from the part, and then they could say six, seven, eight, nine, until they get to 15. But either way, you'll want them to write the two different parts. Six plus nine equals 15. Once students have played a few hands-on games and they've really manipulated the numbers, especially using things like those different tools, like a number bond or a part-part whole, then I like to go into some games where students can master this skill. I actually have two free print and play games I wanna share with you. The first one is right here. It's called Roll a Bond. And this is pretty simple. All you need are two different dice and you will roll the two dice and then you will write them where the little black dots are. So you can see on this first one in the top left, the two black dots are in the part part part. And in the second one, there's one in the hole and one in the top part. So if you were doing that one, I explained to student, students that the larger number will go in the hole portion and the smaller number will go in the part section. And then students themselves have to figure out what the missing part is. There's also a line under each one where students can write the equation based on what they rolled. Now that game is actually in a number bond freebie that I uploaded years ago to TBT. And just so you know, inside of it, it also has a number bond mat like this right here that you could use, uh, like I said previously, for any of those hands-on games. And then it also has this missing bonds sheet right here and a bunch of story problem cards that look like this. There's actually 12 of them for students to read or for you to read aloud, and they have to go and decide which part of the story problem are the parts and which one is the whole and solve. That's actually a whole big freebie that even has some fact family stuff in there. So that is the first freebie for you, and I will link it down in the description for you to grab after this video. The second decomposing freebie I have for you is this game right here, and it is called Roll, Solve, and Color. And I actually shared this before also in my kindergarten edition video, but all students will do here is roll two dice and they will find the uh, number that matches up, the number bond that matches up on the left hand side, and then they have to solve that number bond. They have to figure out what the missing piece is of that hole. Once they've solved it, they will color it in on the right of their grid. And if they're playing with a partner, they will go back and forth until that whole grid on the right is covered up. And once that happens, they will figure out who colored in the most to find the winner. And I'll of course link that freebie down in the description as well. Okay, activity number three for teaching how to decompose numbers is to use quick images or dot cards. Now, just this past summer, I did a whole series on some number sense routines that I love, and I actually made a whole video about using quick images in your classroom. So if you're interested more in about that procedure and how it works and some good tips for that, definitely go watch that video. But using quick images is a great way for students to think about the different ways they can make a number. I would probably continue to do this as a warm up to a math lesson, and I would display a dot card that looks something like this. Now here you can see there are 12 different dots, but there's many different ways students might have gotten that number. The goal of this activity is always for students to answer the question, how many dots do you see? But when they're actually explaining how many they saw, I asked them for a little bit more. How did you get to that number? What groupings of dots did you see? 
For example, I might have students come up and with different color markers, they might circle how they got their answer. Some students might see groups of four, maybe they saw four plus four plus four. Maybe students saw this tall one as the eight plus the four on the side, or maybe they saw the four first and then the eight. Maybe they saw four different columns, meaning two plus two plus four plus four. Incorporating this type of math warm up as a regular routine in your classroom is a great way for students to, again, use their number sense and think of all the different ways numbers can be made. Then when they're decomposing those numbers like 12 in the future, they now have in their frame of reference some other ways to make 12 that they may not have thought of before. And activity number four for teaching students how to decompose numbers is to use expanded form. Now this is definitely going to be for your second grade students, but I didn't want to finish this video without giving my second grade teachers a little tip for you as well. When your second grade students are decomposing numbers, they're going all the way up to 1000. So you're going to want to use some base 10 blocks. Here I have the tens, the rods, you have ones and the big hundred squares as well. And for this, I would use a place value mat like this right here, where you can see the hundreds, the tens and the ones. Now for an activity like this, you can do it guided by giving students a number aloud, or you can make a bunch of random cards within, you know, one to 1000, maybe like 10 to 20 random cards where they could go ahead and show different ways to make the number. So for example, let's put 324 at the top here. I would want my students to first expand it into the hundreds, tens, and ones. So 300 plus 20 plus four. But then I also want them to show me a couple different ways they could also make that number. For example, combining the tens in the ones column to say 300 plus 24 and then also maybe combining the hundreds and the tens column to say 320 plus four. This type of activity has the same benefits of all three of the other ones I previously shared, getting students to see those numbers in different ways and figure out the different ways those numbers can be made and then, you know, broken into pieces, so decomposed. But this is a great way for it to work with those larger numbers in the hundreds. So there you have four different ideas for teaching students how to decompose numbers in a fun and engaging way. All the freebies I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description. And if any of these activities are something you want to try in your own classroom, tell me in the comments which activity you're going to try with your kids. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.